Hi, welcome back. So now you have understood the concept of services. We're going to look at a small uh, example on the same. Uh, I'm going to create a simple demo by calling it um, services demo. I'm going to use 15 API and empty activity. And name the main activity, whatever you want. Now, in this particular example, there will be two buttons, start service and stop service. When you click on start service, your services, your service gets started. And uh, if you try to click again to your start service, it won't get started because it's already started. Now, there will be a stop service because uh, we are going to implement only started type of service. We are not going to implement the bound service. So started services run indefinitely. You got to stop them uh, from your own or there should be a self stop uh, after they are complete. So for that, we have provided a stop service button. You click on that, your service gets stopped. Now, if you try to click on that stop service again, nothing will happen because your service has already stopped. So let's just see this in action. For that, I will create a nice UI. I will drag and drop, drag and drop a text view and I will call it services demo and 30 SP. Great. So I will create two buttons. First button, call it um, start service. Second button, let me call it stop service. Great. So when you click on start service in the XML, you need to put a on click attribute and let me just call it uh, start something. That's the method I want to implement in my activity again. And for this also stop something. Great. So I'll, I need to implement these method there. So I will just do alt plus enter. And there you go. And then enter again. Alt plus enter, enter again. So I have two methods here. Beautiful. All I need now is to create a service. So either I create a manually Java class and extend it by service and then put the registration or put the definition, the manifest file manually. Or there is an easier way to do that. Just right click on your development package, go to new and then go to your service and from there select the service. Now, mm, put the name of the service, let's say my own service, whatever the name you want to give, and you want it to be exported there so that other can use it or enable, well, it's it's totally uh, upon you that, that uh, if you want the service to be used by others, check on exported, enable, yeah, of course you want to enable it. Just finish. And as you can see, my service has been created by extending the class from service and uh, by default on bind method is being coming here is coming here that is uh, for bind services but as of right now I'm not going to use any bind service uh, related task so I can return null too. Great. But uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a start service so to start that service we need on start command method that's that's first and then uh, because I'm, I also want to um, show the user that service has destroyed. So I do want a destroy um, method to be overrided too. So if you remember the life cycle of your uh, started services, it starts from on create, it's, then it goes to your uh, on start command. Whenever somebody calls your start service, then it service starts running, and then uh, uh, it goes to your destroying life cycle, and it destroys. It gets destroyed by calling on destroy. Okay. Cool. So now I have my services ready. All I need to do now is uh, whatever the message I want to pass. So you know, on start method, inside on start method, this is where you will put your uh, functionality or the code which you long running code which you want to put um, in a service. But you, if your uh, code is taking too long, then I would suggest you create a, another background thread and put that code in there. And whenever it is needed, use broadcast receivers, um, um, broadcast receiver to get uh, your UI updated. Well, uh, why is that? Because your service itself runs in your main thread, right? So you do not want to halt your main thread for too long. So toes dot make text, put the context object this. Now services does have a context object, so you can put this. Uh, what's the message you want to show? Let's say service started. 
S T A R T E D service star it and put the length short dot show. Great. If you want to put the log to go on, I don't mind. So let's just put a log uh, my my service and put the log services service has started. Cool. Right. So uh, at the end, make sure you are giving uh, integer value. Well, what this integer value is, if you are creating uh, services that you want, uh, even your service abruptly uh, canceled or get destroyed next time you come it it's it's um, it's again start from there wherever you left so we have some constant for that so as of right now i'm going to use uh, start sticky uh, one so um, it will remain there if you do not want um, uh, start sticky you can use the other constants too and in destroy on destroy again i will just copy these two statements and I will change the message like services service stop and service has stopped that's all great so I have my service ready here right all I need to do now is call this service here so how do I do that well for that I do call what I do need an intent right so intent I one mm. uh, Let's say equals to new intent, and you're gonna go from this to your service class. That is my own service dot class. Great. And how do you start your service by calling start service? Just pass your intent. Good. And if you want to stop your service, stop service and give the intent name well uh, you haven't really initialized your intent just copy this same intent here and again uh, just put that stop there you go great I just run this So uh, let's just click on our start service button. It should show me a toast. Great, it's showing me toast that started service, service started. So if I go to your Android monitor, there should be a log related to that too. Great, you can see that service has started. So if I click on start service again, uh, okay, service will again start, but the, uh, but the thing here is it will never create a new object uh, what, what do I mean by that I will just explain in a bit but uh, let's just stop the service first service stop right so the service has stopped but if you try to click on service stop again it won't be uh, calling that toast why because uh, it's it's never uh, it, it doesn't have a st start service method again so you see here uh, let me just explain it again when you click on that button start service the method the service was created from on create and uh, an object was created for start service now there is on uh, there is a one object right now if you try to click on this it won't create a new object it will just it will be just using that same object so uh, uh, how exactly i'm proving that because if i click on stop service it should stop uh, uh, it should show me to twice but it's it's not showing me twice as you can see there you go see the the uh, object of service is only uh, created once so that's the reason uh, um, I told you that on start service will be called again and again and the service will be ha having a single object if you want to really prove that you can ha have on create here and in that on create you can put these two lock yeah and service created And try to run this now. Try this. Service created. Service started. 
right? Again, see, service started only. Never, uh, it will never call create it again, until unless you destroy. Well, service stopped, and service created again, and service started again. Cool. So uh, that was a small example showing you to the uh, showing the life cycle of services. How exactly you can use your life cycle of services and uh, how or, or where exactly we will be putting the uh, functionalities of services. You can design more complex example using services. Uh, by using the same life cycle. So that was it from my side. Thank you. <laughs>